Hello and welcome. We're going to take a quick first look and initial impressions with Fedora 14. <laughs> So if you hadn't heard, Fedora 14 released about a week ago today. I've actually been using it on my laptop for almost that full week. I, I gave it about that long and I have to be honest here, it's not on there anymore. And we'll get into that here in just a minute. But let's go ahead and just go to the Fedora documentation and look at the release notes. Let's see, this actually comes pre-installed on the disk, on the system itself when you install it. You see we've got user share doc, HTML, all that fun stuff. So you don't actually have to connect to the net to get to that. But you'll see here we have this changes for desktop users. Now I've already watched a review done by the Linux Action Show. I have a load of respect for those guys. I normally don't agree with their reviews on Fedora 100%, but I do have to kind of agree with a lot of what they said this time. Because basically when you look at the changes for desktop users, there's a couple of things mentioned, a couple of new apps in the repositories. Uh, man has been changed out for man DB, huge change there. Uh, Pino is now the default, it's been removed, there we go. Uh, Gwibber is available, it's just saying it's available though, it's not actually using it. There are some KDE changes that have been made, we may end up doing a KDE review, but that's neither here nor there. Other than that, look, there's new apps that are available. Probably speeding through that a little bit, but uh, on-screen input, new apps available, new apps available, none of them pre-installed. Yes, the biggest changes that there were mentioned as far as desktop users go, there's the Spice backend, which should make virtualization a lot easier in the future. Doesn't actually impact us right now, so that's not terribly useful. And libjpeg turbo is now available, which makes your JPEGs load and save faster. Now I did try this very briefly, it really didn't make a difference. I actually compared it with my Arch desktop and the speed was the same. I mean, I don't know if maybe Arch already has something like that built into it. I haven't compared it with Ubuntu, but honestly, I could see this being useful if you're a photographer, if you're a graphic designer working with really large images. For an average desktop user, uh, a lot of the, the cameras that you'll be, be dealing with might have larger images nowadays, but I, I've, I've got a decent camera. It's uh, it's more than 10 megapixels and the images it puts out are about 3 megabytes in JPEG format and those take about a second to load on any system, even on Fedora 14. So basically, let's just take a quick look through the menus and we'll see what's changed, what's new, if anything. So applications menu, nothing new, nothing new. We have Shotwell and Simple Scan. I believe Shotwell has been updated a little bit. I'm not really a photo management person, at least not through an application. If this is a newer version, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Uh, I gotta say, you know, Shotwell is making progress. Yorba is making a lot of progress on a lot of apps, so it's very cool to see Shotwell taking their place uh, as the default in several distros. Under internet, we've got a couple of things. Gmail Notifier is actually something I installed because they mentioned it was available in the repos. You can actually set it up to notify you whenever you've got new mail on your Gmail account. In addition, there's a second app you can install to actually come in and change your preferred application so that Gmail is your default reader. It's called GNOME Gmail. So that's kind of useful, but I'm pretty sure that's available on other distros as well, especially on Arch, which is where I spend most of my time. Uh, let's see what version of Firefox we've got installed, just out of curiosity. Firefox 3.6.12, so that is up to date as far as I know. I haven't heard of one newer than that. Oh, where were we? Internet, uh, Office. Oh look, there's no Office stuff installed by default. Uh, but I think that is just a Fedora thing, if I remember correctly. It's been a little while since I've used Fedora. I've been an Arch Linux user for a while now, so I'm a little bit spoiled as to what you can get on Arch. I do realize that you can go in and actually install uh, new things using add remove software. Let's go ahead and look at that while we're while we're thinking about it. Uh, let's just say open office because I believe I looked for LibreOffice before. LibreOffice is not available in the default repositories, but there's a load of open office 3.3 stuff available if you want to get that. You'll see if I search for LibreOffice and then hit find we find nothing. And that is because Fedora has chosen to back the open office pony for the time being. Now in Fedora 15 and Fedora 16, who knows, they may change their mind, but by that time LibreOffice may not be around anymore. 
So back to the applications menu, like I said, nothing in the office except for the default, a couple of little things. Sound and video, a couple of things in here, you do get cheese by default now, and I don't remember that being in Fedora 13. Again, correct me if I'm wrong there, but I, I don't seem to remember there being a, a webcam application in there. Uh, you get Rhythm Box as the default audio player, and that's about it. Under your system tools, again, default stuff here, your SE Linux troubleshooter, because everybody loves SE Linux. Honestly, I don't have a problem with it. It just, uh, especially on this install, it popped up several times, on my laptop especially, notifying me of things that were not really issues on a default install. Uh, not saying that, that's, you know, SE Linux is a great idea, but now that AppArmor is actually being merged into the kernel, we may have a, a little bit of conflict on our hands in the future. And it still comes, of course, with this Deja Dupe backup tool, which is useful, but I I do all my backups manually. I'm, I'm really bad when it comes to things like that. Uh, preferences, we've got, oh look, all the same things that were there before. Uh, administration, same stuff you'd expect to find. I do enjoy that Fedora comes with a firewall management utility out of the box. If you have not actually seen this before, I know on Ubuntu they don't really go out of the way to let you know that it's available. Uh, but there we go, we've got uh, all these different services that we can manage. If you want to turn off the firewall, if you really want to go that route, you can. There's a wizard that will walk you through what you need to do to set up your firewall, though. That is highly recommended. If you don't have a firewall management utility of some sort on any distro, I would recommend having one just in case. Uh, but let's see, let's move right along. Again, we've got that add remove software that we mentioned before. Logical volume management, if you do happen to use that. I'm always a basic volume person. I, you know, I don't have any reason to do logical volumes. Just my my personal opinion. If you do though, it is nice to have a graphical utility to manage them with. And what else? We've got software sources and software update, normal stuff, and of course the release notes. Honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more in this terms of documentation here. Maybe a beginner's guide or, you know, I say this about a lot of distros, a beginner's guide, a how-to, a something. It would be great to have in there. Uh, let's see, about this computer, we've got GNOME 2.32, so that is extraordinarily up to date. Very nice. Uh, we've got two gigs of RAM available. Let's see how we're doing in terms of resources. Uh, we're not touching the swap. We're using about 300 megs of RAM, and that's just sitting here doing nothing. Gnome's a little bit heavy on a lot of distros, so I don't know. That's that's about average, I would say. But that's about all there is to really say. I guess we could look at the backgrounds and the themes, but that's that's just uh, stuff that can very easily be changed. The new default wallpaper, I kind of like it. I mean, I, I know a lot of you guys may not. Kind of looks like glass or ice that's shooting at you with lasers and electricity and whatever. Kind of cool. Uh, other than that, everything else is the default theme. It's got the clear looks theme, and uh, that's about it. A couple of others that you would expect to find. So yeah, uh, Fedora is as Fedora usually is. It is very close to what you would expect to be the default. It's got a bare minimal set of applications, but you can install new things uh, pretty easily. I will probably make another video on Fedora just talking about some custom tweaks that you can do, some things you can do to make life a little easier as a desktop user. But for now, my opinions of Fedora were a little mixed. That actually, before I stop there, the running this on my laptop for a few days, I noticed that I had some wonky little issues with my NVIDIA graphics card. Uh, I was trying to browse websites and it was just kind of laggy. And that's because I think the NVIDIA driver might be a little bit out of date. Let's just go check while I'm thinking about it. NVIDIA. But that NVIDIA driver was actually pulled from RPM Fusion. If I had stuck with the open source one, I probably wouldn't have had those issues, just as Fedora intends. I mean, if I go out to the web right now and just go to, oh, I don't know, YouTube. There we go. And it even on this uh, virtual machine, it seems to scroll pretty decently, so I can't really give them flack over that if it's a driver issue. But anyway, uh, try out Fedora 14 if you want to. There's not really all that much difference aside from just updated software. Hopefully Fedora 15 will be a little bit more of a blow you away kind of distro. But for now, it's, it's not blowing me away. But that's all for now. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.